as you say quite correctly, it is an intractable political issue. It is, it is not a problem that I think will resolve through the courts or by ESCOM's credit actions. It's a, it's a problem that requires um, the cutting of a Gordian knot and some very decisive political action. ESCOM is suffering from widespread acts of sabotage, but is ESCOM getting enough support from the South African police and the National Prosecuting Authority? I posed this question to Andre Dureta, CEO of ESCOM, in a recent episode of my podcast, Solutions with David Ansara. What follows is a short extract from our longer conversation. If you would like to watch the full discussion with Andre Dureta, that's linked in the description below. Enjoy. Uh, so in terms of the policy framework more broadly, I think ESCOM is really up against it uh, in a few areas. So uh, the one I would say is in its relationship with municipalities, and the other is uh, rampant criminality. We've seen a number of instances of sabotage happening this week. I know that you're quite reluctant to use the S word, uh, but I think that it's very clear what is happening there. Um, so let's focus on the crime aspect first. Uh, are you getting the necessary support that you need from the South African police and the National Prosecuting Authority in addressing this rampant sabotage? Uh, the short answer to that is no. Uh, we are not getting the necessary support from the South African police. Uh, while we, we have some good points of contact with the Directorate of Priority Crime Investigations, which is called the Hawks, um, in, in other instances, we know that there are people with clear criminal intent who are released uh, the following day on the instructions of senior officers. Uh, now, now, that's a clear indication that there is something awry in uh, our law enforcement system, where we um, at Tutuka Power Station um, laid charges against three managers who were involved in the theft of 100 million rand per month, uh, only for them to be released on a derisory 500 rand bail uh, really is a bit of an insult uh, when we look at the, at the harm that, that we suffer. Now, I understand people aren't guilty until, until proven guilty, uh, but surely where someone is accused of such egregious fraudulent activity, 500 rands is what you'd expect for a you know, modest traffic infraction, uh, never mind stealing 100 million rand a month. And let's now turn to municipalities. And uh, I think uh, the ESCOM's uh, debt that is owed to the utility by municipalities is around 47 billion rand. That's quite a sizable sum. And you are trying to recover uh, some of those outstanding uh, fees. Um, but many of these municipalities are functionally bankrupt. Uh, they're no longer really able to meet those obligations. And I know there have been a couple of court cases uh, run by the likes of Saki Licha, for example, where ESCOM has uh, cut power to these municipalities, but ratepayers are the ones who end up suffering, even though they're in good standing with the municipality. Uh, so, I mean, this strikes me as a bit of an intractable problem. How are you going to go about recovering uh, these outstanding funds and without uh, punishing uh, citizens on the ground who, who are meeting their obligations? Uh, fundamentally, I think what, we, what we're witnessing is um, the, the, the breakdown of what, what should be a political process. If... Um, your municipality doesn't pay its supplier of electricity. And as a consequence, the, um, the supplier of electricity then cuts off supply, which is the normal credit control that we apply to our industrial customers, for example. If, if South 32 don't pay us, we simply cut them off. And that tends to concentrate their minds very quickly. Not that I'm saying in any way whatsoever that South 32 is not a good payer. They're in fact a very good customer of ours. But with municipalities, there's a, there's a different dynamic at play. And we understand that our actions cause uh, hardship to residents who do pay. But then the, the answer surely is that there should be a democratic process at the ballot box to vote out these councillors who clearly, uh, in many instances, misappropriate funds uh, for their own purposes. If you uh, scan around the room, 
uh, you will see a substantial number of uh, Louis Vuitton handbags and uh, cell phone covers and, and other luxury items that, that um, I would uh, not buy for myself or for my spouse um, because it's very, very expensive. So the question is, um, do we have the political will to solve these problems? Now, one of, the, one of the reasons why South Africans regard electricity prices as inflated is that some municipalities add a very hefty markup to the tariffs that ESCOM charged the municipality. In the case of Salt Lake municipality, which is Kimberley, uh, as much as 121% markup. So when people complain about the cost of electricity, yes, in some cases, that's true. Now, SELGA, the South African Local Government Association, have recently launched a court case against ESCOM, trying to compel ESCOM to hand over all distribution to municipalities. Clearly, there is an economic motive at play here because the municipalities want to have access to another source of revenue. But uh, in our view, what's going to happen is that if they are successful in this application, then customers and municipalities are going to end up paying more. Uh, which again, you have to ask, is this in the, in the public interest? Now, to resolve this 47 billion rand's worth of debt, we are engaging with uh, National Treasury. There is a, um, a court case in which um, the, the, the judge, um, in an obiter remark, so it, so it wasn't a finding in the court case per se, but it was an obiter remark, so it has, has, has less of, of uh, binding power on, on other courts. Um, he, he stated that ultimately National Treasury is the data of last resort for all government debt, never mind at which level of government it is incurred at. And we, in our discussions with National Treasury, rely on this as um, an indication that ultimately someone needs to pay for the poor governance that we have seen in these delinquent municipalities. Now, if you, if you look at a municipality like Maluti Apufong, uh, they now as, owe us in the region of 16.2 billion rand. It is highly unlikely that they will ever have the wherewithal to pay that off. So some sort of bailout is required. Uh, otherwise, you know, ESCOM just goes back to National Treasury and says, we need more bailouts from you, National Treasury, because part of government isn't paying us. So we need to solve this problem. Uh, it's a, it's a as you say quite correctly, it is an intractable political issue. It is, it is not a problem that I think will resolve through the courts or by ESCOM's credit actions. It's a, it's a problem that requires um, the cutting of a Gordian knot and some very decisive political action. Yeah, the problem is that bailouts create moral hazard, uh, that you know that you can get away with that kind of behavior in the future. Uh, but, you know, there are more capable municipalities or metros like the city of Cape Town to actively looking to procure power. City of Joburg, Mayor Mpo Palazzi, this week at one of the energy in Darbas, was saying that the city wants to spend 24 billion rand on energy. They only have about 8 billion rand for infrastructure generally. Hmm. Uh, so would you lend your support to these cities that are trying to lessen their dependence on ESCOM and crowd in private providers? Absolutely. I think it's great. Uh, <laughs> You know, it may sound strange for me as the, as the chief executive of, of a utility to, to actively encourage competition. But my view is that South Africa comes first in this debate. South Africa needs additional electricity as soon as possible. If the metros are able to uh, pursue these projects and get more megawatts on the grid and relieve the pressure on the ESCOM generation system, uh, it would be terribly unpatriotic of me to say, but hang on, you know, it's going to cost ESCOM money uh, when the country is, is uh, subjected to load shedding. So we are supportive of it. We will uh, enable it uh, to the extent we can by providing grid connections. Uh, we will definitely not put obstacles in the way of metros trying to secure their own energy futures by buying directly from IPPs. And we will wheel this electricity over our grids in order to enable uh, the municipalities to connect to those providers of electricity. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this episode down in the comments section. Also, if you would like to watch the full discussion with Andre Dereta, that's linked over here. You can also subscribe to my other channel, that's linked over here. 
My name is David Ansara. Until next time, take care.